Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with friend of the channel, Jonathan Twomley. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Michael. How are you? I'm doing well. I, I don't know about you, but one of the uh, one of the old time real estate investors I always follow when I see an article or lucky enough to catch him on CNBC or Bloomberg is Sam Zell. Yeah. Right. Equity residential, grave dancer, right? He's 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 been in this game since I was a very, very young man, actually a child. And uh, I, I like him because he's brash. He doesn't really care. He just says what's on his mind. Uh, he came out yesterday with what I thought was interesting. He was obviously asked about inflation and, and interest rates. And in true Sam Zell fashion, he kind of took a right turn. And he actually highlighted that his greatest fear going forward is not higher rates or even inflation, but what might be a surprise in a liquidity crisis. So, uh, like to talk about that, but if you want to give your your experience with Sam Zell, please uh, just that's an interesting character. Well, yeah, and he is, and I and you know a couple of years ago, I used to kind of raise him as an example of a truly savvy investor who was sitting on a lot of cash on the sidelines, mm -hmm. waiting for yeah. a crash. And this is like 2019 when I sold all my properties, and what I didn't sell until Sam Zell said the crash is coming. I just you know I looked at I read the tea leaves and I thought yeah. You know, yeah, this is a good time to sell. Uh, and but Sam Zell at the time was saying essentially, crash is coming. I'm selling it. He was liquid, liquidating assets, if you oh, remember. I do. To get, yeah. To get ready for the crash. Another interesting thing. Ten thirty one doesn't care, right? Like not like you just look around and all these people are like, I got a ten thirty one. I can't pay any taxes. The end of the world will happen if I have to pay any tax. And Sam Zell is looking at the world going. I got to free up cash yes. so I can buy cheap stuff, you know, and taxes are, it's just not relevant for this. I agree. Of, for this piece of my business, right? Yep. Like I, need, I need the cash. Yep. So he was raising, and he was sitting on, I think 1.3 billion in cash mm -hmm. uh, in 2019, right? Yep. So, uh, you know, I, I think unfortunately for him, COVID didn't produce the bargains that he was, anticipating from before COVID ever happened. Right, right, before it was a thing, yep. Before it was a thing, because the government bailed out everybody and you know pushed interest rates to zero mm -hmm. and sort of created the predicate for what Zell is talking about now. Correct. Right? And so um, going back, we probably have this in our recordings from from when coronavirus first started and the Fed dropping rates to, to zero. I, I guarantee if you go back and look, you will find our conversations about this. The re one of the major reasons why the Fed pushed interest rates to zero, and there was even talk about them going negative, mm -hmm. was because of all of the companies that had gorged themselves on cheap debt. Yes. And they could not make their debt service. I remember. If interest rates stayed at that level and the demand fell off a table because of coronavirus, right? So there would have, so the Fed lowered interest rates just to keep those zombies alive, mm -hmm. right? Because the Fed knew that if some of those companies started to default on their debt, it would be a cascade of defaults and we would have a liquidity crisis. Yep. So what Sam Zell is arguing essentially is that all the Fed did was kick this can down the road a couple of years and, and now because inflation has reared its head and we've got the war in Ukraine and we've got all this other kind of stuff going on, interest rates are rising, right? And that liquidity crisis that the Fed had tried to stave off could now happen because of these companies that are in existence only because they have access to cheap debt. And the cheap debt is exactly. not for cheap anymore, right? So now the, the, the mechanism for this happening will be, will be cascading defaults, right? Correct. Yeah. They'll have someone default on their debt, and that causes someone that is waiting for the money from them to default on their debt, yeah. right? And when that happens, the banks will then say, we ain't lending anymore to yeah. nobody, right? That's, that's exactly what Sam was really getting at, is he envisions a world. He basically says price discovery was destroyed for two years. Yeah. Bad deals, ill-equipped operators, zombies, whatever you want to call it. It didn't matter. Everybody was making rain because debt was free. Yeah, he's saying time to pay up. It's going to be bad. And to your last point, he says eventually banks are going to pull back just like last time. Yeah, it, it just it's just inevitable that if you get 
cascading defaults, that is what's going to happen. Now, I would say the one thing that maybe could prevent this, and I'm not talking about the real estate world, I'm just talking no. about the, the rest of like, like uh, corporate debt and stuff. Correct. Corporate the debt. thing that could potentially happen, like prevent this from happening is that you know, corporations are having record profits right now. I mean, they are just making money hand over fist. Sure. So they may be able to absorb some, some will, more, some more debt, right? But there are definitely, that being said, there are, even though corporations as a general rule are making a ton of money at the moment, record profits, there are, that, that doesn't mean every company is profitable, right? Exactly. Doesn't mean every, so it really depends on if the defaults start to happen, what the scope of it is. A few defaults here and there, nobody's going to notice companies go bankrupt all the time. No one's going to mm -hmm. care. Yeah. It's really, if you start, if, if there starts being, a, you know, a substantial number, enough corporate defaults that lenders get skittish yeah. and start pulling back or start tightening their underwriting standards, you know, and the same thing in, in commercial real estate, mm -hmm. yeah. you start seeing if foreclosures start to spike in any kind of serious way, mm -hmm. then you're going to see lenders starting to tighten their underwriting standards. That's going to make debt less available yeah. to other people, and, you know, and it'll, it'll, it'll cause prices to rise. Now, another sort of wild card here is mm -hmm. what, what does the, the whole private lending, shadow banking, you know, industry yeah. do? Do they, do they just then say, hey, we're just going to step in and lend everybody money because, uh, because it can? Or like, are they, I think a lot of these folks are borrowing money from the same yes. sources ultimately. It's all the same piles. And yeah. relending it, right? So yeah. they maybe they may not- They're making change, a wedge, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they may not change their underwriting standards, but they may not be able to get the debt, you know, because they're not, it's not their own money that they're lending out, right? They're taking a spread. Yeah, I see, I see, a, I see quite a bit of pain and I'm just trying to connect dots. That's what I do when I study the economy every day is over time, you start to see dots connect. I think it was three weeks ago, uh, Instacart uh, had to have what's called a down round, right? Last valuation was 35, 39 billion. Latest round was 24 billion. Instacart is not profitable and like not profitable by a mile. Right. And their burn rate was, they were going to go poof. Uh, so they had to, they were, their timing of cash wasn't great. And they had to go raise now when the, the VC monies are getting skittish. So yeah, they had a down round, which ripples across the employee base and all of these things because all their options are at different values. And it's it's I think I think it's coming. I think there's a lot of tech unicorns that are flavors of zombies. And I wouldn't be shocked if many of them go poof or they have to take significant haircuts in what's called a down round. Yeah, and then and they're gonna that'll lead to layoffs and exactly. Layoff. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, all these things are connected. And as as you and I have said before, you know, you, you can't you can't prevent recessions from happening. No, uh, no matter how hard you try. Yeah, and they, and they, and it, the the longer you push it out, the worse it's going to be when it happens, right? Especially like, yeah. since we don't get to have business cycle recessions anymore, they yeah. all become debt crises, right? Because yep. it's all it's all debt fueled, and we have, cannot we haven't you know done the hard work of like cleaning up our you know public and private balance sheets, right? Yeah. And so uh, it's it's kind of scary out there. So, I agree. you know, and it, I think it, it does make it, you know, like Sam Zell said, when price discovery is destroyed, it makes it very difficult if you're a thinking person as opposed to a cowboy yeah. to make decisions, right? Yeah. The cowboys are always going to tell you it's going to get, you know, no matter what it is, it's going to get better. It's always, multifamily is always going to be great. Yeah. whatever it is right you know yeah. interest rates go up it's good for multifamily. interest rates go down it's good for multifamily. you know so it, they'll always tell you you can't lose right yeah there's there there are two, in my opinion there are people like you and i who invest our own capital yeah. who have to be thinking investors and then there are people out there who are showmen uh who are nothing more than names and celebrities who are attracting other people's money and they get paid to do it uh, and so it's very little, if any, of their own capital involved. So I think there's a lot of operators who are getting paid to be celebrities. Yeah, and I mean, they're, that's they're not good. Like they're, they're essentially marketers. Essentially, yeah. And they're and they're they're able to raise enormous amounts of money through their marketing efforts, but they're not underwriting the deals. They're not, you know. And so, so that aside, I mean, when I what I'm talking about though is like for right now, 
the sort of dilemma like inflation is ramping up. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be in cash? No, but that could cause a crash to happen. Do you want to be in cash? Yes. Right. So it's, it's kind of, it makes it a lot harder to, uh, to kind of figure out the future. I think back in the day before, mm -hmm. before Greenspan and the Fed started mucking around with the economy to the extent that it, that it has, yeah. I think you could pretty much, you know, have an idea that, okay, we may be heading into a recession, but like, you know, business typical recession is 12 to 18 months, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it, all you gotta do is write out 12 to 18 months and I'm good. Yeah. Right? Now it's like, okay, is the value of everything I own going to get destroyed? Yep. Right. Because there's going to be a huge crash. And like, how do I get through that? Right. How do I get, if my, you know, I, I, if I lose 30% of the value of my home, right. And my stock portfolio goes down 50%. Yep. Right? Can I, survive long enough for the recovery right and then so you want to have cash for that right? you need to have cash in in the bank yeah if, in case you lose your job or your, your business <laughs> or whatever right so uh there's a lot of a lot of things to kind of like measure here so mm -hmm. um yeah I, you know me i like cash i'm like no, I, yeah i uh, me me too i mean um I, I'll say it now. I have more cash right now than I've had any time in my investing career. I'm happy to lose 8% because I'm hoping to get a 30 to 50% discount on some distressed assets. And oh, by the way, I've done it before. So I know I can do it again. Yeah. That's, listen, it's, a, it's an option. I, I, this inflation thing, I mean, you know, you and I, I think have slightly different. I mean, you think it's going to be more permanent than I do. Mm -hmm. But I'm just, you know, I yesterday I went to look at a, at a property like 50 miles north of, north of New York City. Okay. Well, I saw gas for three dollars and fifty three cents a gallon. How much? Three dollars and fifty three cents. Oh Jesus! It's six twenty nine where I am. I think I filled up yesterday. Yeah, but I'm just saying it's like, it's come, it's coming down. Yeah, you know? good. So it's, I, I think that we'll we'll see about inflation. I think yeah. It's, and if interest rates are going up, frankly, that's going to take a bite out of inflation. I mean, it can't. Yeah, happen. I mean that's what that's 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 what it's supposed to do. That's the whole idea. <laughs> that's the whole idea. Supposed to suck money out of the economy. That's the exactly. whole idea. Right? Yeah. So, That's awesome. Well, Jonathan, how can people find you? Uh, so if you would like to invest with me in one of my future deals and you are an accredited investor, you should go to uh, Google my website, Two Bridges Asset Management LLC, and you'll find the investor form and fill it out and we'll be in touch. Uh, awesome. If you would like to learn from me about how to be a multifamily investor and join my monthly call for students every month and mm. my full course and a whole bunch of other things, uh, discounts on future events, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can go to multifamilylaunchpad.org slash join and see uh, how to join my program. And finally, I got free stuff too. If you would like to join my free Facebook group, it's called Multifamily Investment Community, which is on Facebook. And uh, just stop by and uh, join yeah. up. Yeah, you got to join the Facebook group. It's free. I'm there. He puts out a lot of amazing stuff. Uh, and I, I think there's like 12,000 people or something. It's crazy. Something like that. Yeah. That's, that's show off. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thank you.